Hi, and guess who's back? It's me. So, finally, a little bit time here to make a video, edit a video, hopefully. And today we are doing a little bit continuing on what we did earlier. So, uh, this video is about my red little tracked mini dumper. And if you remember from earlier, we had some problems. I will link the video up in the corner somewhere and uh, you can check it out. But we have some parts here for the tracked mini dumper, so new couplings because these broke and a new rubber for uh, keeping in there and a new fan that was the earlier video that i linked up here so earlier the fan broke and i had to fix it uh, and it didn't hold too long so now i got it back because this is making the cool air for the hydraulics so pretty important to have so let's drag it out of there and see if we can uh, fix it we have to pull the engine out and uh, yeah, should be easy enough. Done it a couple of times, so. All right, a bit more room to work. And yeah, this is just for holding the box up because it was not running when I got it. So I had to go and get it with the Terex and a trailer and pull this one up on the trailer. So what we've done, we just released the pump here. So this is a hydraulic pump and that's what's the problem. It's between the engine and the pump. So it doesn't have power in between. Uh, the couplings are ruined. So. That's why we need to pull the engine out. It's pretty easy. Engine is in here. It's just a small gas engine right there. So release four bolts under and then just release the oil cooler and yeah, mostly pull it out. So let's get cracking on it. So here we can see the coupling of the pump and we can see it's worn out and pieces and stuff from it laying around in here. Here is the rubber for the coupling, the dampener. So yeah, not much left of it. So. But that's a good thing because I wasn't 100% sure if it was this coupling or the pump that was ruined. But now we know it's the coupling. So success. Well, pressure wash in here before we put the engine back. Oh, the gas tank was really leaking, so I know I think we need to empty it out before we get too much gasoline everywhere. So then we'll just let the tank drain into this can, and positive side of that, it will be easier to lift it in again. So that's nice. All right, gas is drained out, and uh, I think I found the point of failure. So the bolt keeping this in place is missing. So it's probably, I don't understand how it can disappear because these couplings are connected together. So probably someone forget to install it when we, had the, we changed the engine during the winter or last fall, I think we did it. So that is probably the main reason for this failing. Uh, this one has come, come loose and they're getting too close together and then it have eaten off the ears and the rubber and everything. But let's pull everything else apart. And this is the one thing I forget when I am installing this. It's this cover. Almost every time I put this on, Tighten the bolts and everything, and then I remember, ah, oh, fuck, I need this one also. Yeah. 
Ah, and here is the rest of the rubber. So now this one needs to come off. There is a set screw here, so we need to release that. That is rounded off. Yeah. So you can see, if you've seen the video from before, with the fan and everything uh, that I fixed, you can see now the fan is not here, but you can see the groove it made from when it was touching this after I welded it. It was warped a little bit, so, <laughs> so it was a terrible sound, but it weared off, so that's great. But let's try and see if we can get everything installed. And there is a set screw on this one as well, so we can pull it a little bit up. Not rubbing. And then we have this one. Snug fit here. There is my provision tool. So what I can do here is measure the distance from here to here to see that this one is in the correct place. And I think that's the best way to do it. But let's take this one off. Okay, we need to pull it off. Probably because, if I remember correctly, this one is on a cone, so like the same also primary drive on a snowmobile or something. So there are tracks for splines, or not splines, but uh, I don't know the English word, spuchile. And, uh, and there is one down there. That's a bit dirty. So we will clean that up before we 
install everything. New versus old. A yeah, little bit extra broken now, but yeah. Two different size of trucks here. So let's see which one fits. Snug. Installed. Let's check the distance. So that's about forty five millimeters. So we need to go a little bit deeper. No spark plug in, that's why it's turning so easy. Just to be sure. All right, then we need to find a bolt. Washed off this one pretty quick. I think we are ready for installing. Then we remember this. Mounted flush, so that's not a problem. Ah, that's what I did. A, did it a little bit too good. So you can see the crack here. So the whole plate here has shifted down. Yay! And this is cast aluminium, so not easy to straighten up. Should have been a bar in between here, so you couldn't do that. But hey, they probably didn't think I would use impact gun. Well, here we are. Let's fix it. So you can see it pushed in here and it's pushed in there. So my thoughts are put the bar in between here and then use the hydraulic press and push it down. So as you can see it's up there and there. And now I cut this angle iron and hopefully now use the press and just push it down. In theory. You'll probably not hold this angle, this angle iron. See, no, it's just flipping. All right. Something is making a noise. But is it working? No, probably not. Because, yeah, that won't work because. Now I'm just pushing this harder down and this ain't moving. 
so I need to put a block under here so this it will rest on this and not on the bottom plate here so the road to successes are made as we go and also as Homer Simpson says trying is the first step towards failure so let's see doing something ah, the clearance so see the weight is stable it doesn't but we are also bending this so we are not quite there yet we are flattening out the steel But then again, the angle iron ain't meant for doing this, so... I don't know, let's see just for the fun of it, how many tons do we have on it? So this one is a little bit broken, it starts further down, but it counts, right? So, one ton. Take whatever, let's see. This one holds up better. Getting there. You see the crack? It's pretty small now. Not quite there at this one still. Probably I need to take the hammer and try and hammer it a little bit. There we are, right, that one's perfect, Let's see, yeah. looks up like we are close to something, so question is will it hold when we release, I could find my uh, aluminium welder and give it tack here, but I think I'm out of gas. Let's see what happens if we release it. It holds! Ooh. It's not perfect, but we ain't going for perfect. Ah, sucks making these videos when you're doing these stupid mistakes, but it's a part of the process. When having three bolts been enough. Three or four? Success in my book. I guess you were sitting uh, screaming at the screen telling me I forgot this bolt. Oh well, I didn't. Barely. This one on. Perfect. It is rubbing a bit, but it is what it is. Let's just check that the bolt didn't pull it too far down. Oh, 46. So one day I probably need to buy this one new, uh, uh, not only because of this, but also uh, the holes here for the pump 
are really worn out. You can see them here. You can probably don't see them, but they are really worn out. So my quick fix for that was to install a engine mount under the pump for holding it up because those four bolts was everything that was holding the pump and this thing vibrates and stuff like that. So really difficult and uh, yeah, got a lot better when I did that. Haven't had any problems after that. The engine mount was installed, so that did really help. But okay, let me just clean up some tools and then we can power wash everything in here so it's nice and clean when we put the engine in. Here we will do the engine as well. So, trained eye during this video would have noticed that I missed something. I forgot to put something on, but everyone that have wrenched a little bit themselves know that if you are at this point where everything is put back together almost, it's way too late to do something about it. So, and I don't think the thing is very important either. And that's the disc right here. So it was behind this one, but this one is as mentioned on a tapered shaft and everything. So I don't see the point of it. So I think that was just unnecessary weight. But all right, let's wash this. Also took the engine for washing that. Since everything is out, much better. And then everything will be nice and wet when we are reinstalling everything. Nice and clean engine bay, ready for installing the engine again. Success! Let's just let it dry up a little bit and also the floor. Everything gets wet. And this is the funny thing in this workshop. Yeah, good job keeping the tools dry. Yeah. So you can see all the water is going over here where my power bank is laying on the ground. Yay! And it's going over here and the outlet is over there so success oh well got some water away so let's get the engine in and see if we can get everything to fit Now is the worst part, and that is lining up the hydraulic pump with the engine. So this is pretty hard to film, but what I'm doing now is just turning the pump a little bit and see if it fits, turning the pump a little bit, see if it fits, and so on. And it's a pain in the ass. Alright, you get the idea. I need both sides to do this, so for you this would take a second for me to take an eternity. Alright, I got it in place. Impossible for you to see, but it's in there. And now it's just getting the bolts in. And sadly I don't have any lamps here because yeah, the one lamp we had here is gone missing. So figure it out. Uh, but anyways, uh, as I mentioned, the threads are really bad, so what I do then is I take some wire, stripped wire, and then I will put insert this into the uh, bolt hole, and then insert the bolt, and the copper will act like tightening the threads. So and then I can just tighten it slightly with that. So let's do that. And then the pump is installed, then it's just securing the engine, yeah, then uh, getting the fuel back in, and uh, we can test run it. See that everything works. That's awesome. So, what did you then? Ow. Get these wires out of the way. And we just insert this 
wire in here and then we take a bolt and then we got it a little bit tight here just tighten it carefully and then we do the same for the next four bolts so in what was a second for you guys I have installed everything and we are now ready for the first startup see if everything works just need some fuel Does it move? It does. It works. We fixed it. All right. Yeah. Uh, you can really hear it's grinding a little bit, the new fan, but hopefully it won't wear out because I, I ain't taking this apart again. I was thinking about it when I was uh, pulling the starting cord just to get the pump lined up, and I could hear it grinding, and I was thinking, should I pull it out and do it again? And yeah because the fan was 400 bucks so it was not cheap but there it is it's working again let's just get all the rest on and it's ready for work all right we are a day later and we got the machine running and uh, yeah everything is working but as you could hear the fan is grinding on the metal so we put the fan too far in and yeah stupid me i noticed it when we were putting it in and i didn't do anything about it because it was so much work pu pulling it off again and everything, but giving it a day, thinking about it, I have been coming to the conclusion that I'm pulling the engine again and making it right. It's not, not worth doing if you are not doing it right. So for you, it's luckily a second. For me, it's a little bit more work. I will have to pull the pump off again and pull the engine out, but it's still easy since everything is here. All the tools are on the floor and everything. So let's just go ahead pull the engine out, adjust the fan so it's correct and go again. So here we are, everything off. And so let's adjust it just where it don't grind and just go with it. I think that's the best way to go. So now I just take a couple of zip ties and or the ends of zip ties and I measure or put them under. So it now it should be just the right clearance. So we secure it now. There, we get this one all the way down, tighten the nut, oh, you can see when I tighten the nut, the zip ties did stand up, so we got more pressure down, so let's see, really snug fit. Still rubbing a little bit, so we pushed it too far down with the nut or with the bolt here. No grinding. All right. We'll take some sandpaper and just take a little bit off this edge because you can see it has some hitting marks and stuff like that so that's probably also something that makes it a little bit more difficult to get on and off. And I was home in the garage the other day, found some lights and everything and thought I will take these with me down here, but did I? No, forgot about it. So sadly it's working in the darkness again in there, getting the pump on. That's the struggle. Engine in and out, 
it's pretty okay when you are using this rusher strap. So you can't get any power to lift in here, but with the rusher strap, it goes great. But first, cough of coffee, celebrate. Everything went smoothly. We are almost at the same point where we started just 20 minutes ago, so that's great. Most important, let's hear. No grinding. Oh, that's great. So I hate myself for not doing it the correct way at once, just thinking this is easy, it will adjust itself. But I guess that's why the other fan did fail, because someone left it to adjust itself. So, yeah. And you can also see I'm wearing gloves today, and that's because my hands didn't look, <laughs> they look like a, some meat or something, grinded meat or something after the last day working on this one, so. It's back in action, no scraping from the fan, no nothing. We did it the right way and yeah, I'm so glad I did it the right way. A little bit bad about myself that did try to just wing it and do it halfway, but anyways, we did it the right way now. Everything is back together, wires are connected, electric start is working, lights are working, it's moving forward, backward, and I drove over my glove. Didn't use them all the time, but yeah. Anyways, let's just button up the rest of the stuff here. I think we need a new spark plug for it. I pulled the spark plug out of this old compactor that was smoking a lot last time I used it. So the spark plug was a little bit nasty. I tried to clean it off, but just for the sake of it, testing it. And yeah, everything is working. Get the cover on, get the last bit on here. I think we'll do an oil change on it since we have everything apart. I was thinking about doing it when I had the engine out, but it's almost easier to do it with the engine in. There is just releasing this plug, oil drains out this hole here, and then you fill new oil in here. So let's check it out. Okay, the oil is not old. It's actually not black even. So maybe just run it soon winter here, up here in Northern Norway. So is with me today in the workshop so it's sunday and really nice weather out happy dog happy me machine is working yeah let's put the rest on and uh, then we can call it an evening there it is Finished, nice and ready for work. Everything is working now, lights, everything. So great success. And in the nick of time, because tomorrow it is going out, renting out that one and a little Kubota. So some guy is renting machines to empty out the basement on his own. And yeah, rest in here. Uh, this track mini dumper, I just fixed up. And I actually put it out for sale because I don't use it. It has been standing for two years without me using it. So now I just changed the engine in it and I changed some rollers and stuff like that, bearings in them and everything. Uh, the little uh, wheel loader I bought for $1,500, link up somewhere here, uh, sold that one as well. Doubled my money on it. Wasn't ever in doubt that I wouldn't do that. So 
that was nice. Didn't use it either, so it's better to just sell the stuff I don't use. And next on my list is the Bobcat. So this one has also been standing for two years. So one of the hydraulic motors went out and uh, some bearings in it got seized. So I now just got the new bearings and then I will continue working on it. I filmed everything so far. So there you will see that the beginning is in my garage at home. And then we are finishing off the video in here, fixing it, hopefully. And then I will probably sell this one as well, since I'm not using it. There is no use in having a lot of machines that I don't use. And another thing I've been thinking about is, I have a lot of videos that I'm not happy with the ending or the filming or stuff like that, but I think it can be a little bit interesting. It's a little bit different stuff we have done uh, during the last year, one and a half year. So. I'm thinking about maybe making a like a b-roll video of it and just put all the different stuff in the same video and release it on YouTube. I don't know, give me a hint, what do you think? But that's it for now, now I'll finish off the video with editing and uh, upload it today. Thank you for watching.